check out in five degree weather than the IROC Z. There we go. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is not the car to be taken out in cold weather, and I would say generally you'd be right. But, I got a sweet alternator belt now. That's pretty cool. Alright, so I know a lot of people are going to be upset about seeing this, but you gotta understand that I'd really more or less liken it to you driving in the rain. It's just water. So, I'm gonna go do a little bit of snow blowing and play in the snow a little bit and hopefully I'll get the car back in one piece. Now, this car doesn't have winter tires on it, there's no chains or anything, and obviously it's pretty snowy out, it's really, really cold, and I'm just out having a little bit of fun in the car. Actually does pretty good in the snow with the open diff, it actually drives pretty good. It really wants to stay straight. right now because it is kind of crappy out but honestly this car will be just fine have it safe and sound and all I've got to show for it is a little bit of snow and the wheel wells so that was a lot of fun and honestly I can see doing that more and more so what I've been working on in the background is what I'm gonna try and use to cover up these hood vents now that I've got them cut in my car this is a 10 foot roll of 30 mil magnetic material like you would see decals printed on that you put on car doors, right? The idea being that they can stick to car doors, which are generally going to be steel or ferrous material, which is the same as the hood. I was hoping that I'm going to be able to drive down the road with these on, but I'm not sure how fast they'll be able to go. The first one I tried out, I made it a couple inches oversized and it was too small. The second one I cut out was much, much larger. You can actually see the silhouette of the scoop inside there. You've got about two inches to work with in the center, so I'm gonna create two of them that will meet perfectly in the middle. And being it was rolled up, I had to heat it up and unroll it quite a bit for it to actually get to stick at all. On the leading edge, it's still a little bit bumped up. I don't know how fast you'd be able to drive with these on, but honestly, they do kind of work just as are. Check this out. So, it's not perfect, but it's kind of a uh, proof of concept idea, I guess you could call it. Point being, if you're worried about doing this sort of thing to your car, there is ways that you can keep water off of it in case of emergency is how I'm gonna put it. So if you're at a car show or whatever and it starts raining or you're out driving around town and it starts sprinkling on you, you can take these out of the back of your car, cover up your hood scoops, and it'll keep 99% of the water out of the holes. That's what I was going for. This was my buddy Emac's idea, so all this credit goes to him. It, uh, it does seem like it might work though, if I had to say. On the leading edge, if you favor it, I guess, you could even pull it down a little bit more. You can get a whole bunch of material down here. Honestly, you don't know if you'd lose this on the highway real easily. If you were super worried about it or wanted to go down the freeway, you can keep a little tape in your car too and just tape the leading edge. It wouldn't go anywhere, I'd almost guarantee it. But I think the proof of concept is that this will work for you, or at least it worked for me. Obviously, if you've got a fiberglass hood or whatever, this is kind of, this is kind of not an option for you, but if you're like 99% of people that are cutting up the stock steel hood, this is gonna work great for you. So what I'm gonna do is cut out the other one. I'll go for a little drive with what tire I have left. Unfortunately, I'm down to pretty much nothing on the driver's side. The passenger side fared a little bit better, but uh, anyways, that's kind of the thing that I've been brewing on in the back of my head. 
You can see it's there's an indentation or a silhouette here. I don't know if it would be worth putting some foam underneath here, cut out to the perfect shape so it actually sits in there and you can actually center it or whatever, but you could probably make these pretty nice if you wanted to, but that's about all I gotta say about it. It's just a proof of concept at this point, but I think it's gonna work for me. So if you wanted to buy this stuff, I just got it on Amazon and it was actually, glad it showed up and it only took me maybe 20 minutes to make these. So I'll cut a mirror image out of the other one and hopefully we'll be good to go. Actually ended up taking a lot of time to heat these up so they'd lay flat and I put some weight on them in a few spots because they were all curled up in that shipping container that they came in the tube rather tussle you my performance decal on because as always this car is about to have some you my parts on it it actually doesn't at this time but it's gonna get some hand-me-downs from the Trans Am because over here on the shelf I've got some new parts for the Trans Am so I've been talking about this for a long time I've got a combination Heim joint and polyurethane bushing end lower control arm and pan hard rod set for the Trans Am here. And what I'm gonna do is take the dual Heim joint stuff off of this car and put it on this car because it's adjustable. And if I go to lower this car in the near future, I've already got the parts for it. The reason I'm actually changing the stuff on the Trans Am is because if you have Heim joints on both ends of your lower control arms or pan hard bar, you're gonna get more noise inside of the car and personally, I don't feel that in a car that's 99% street driven, I don't think the trade-off is worth it. So one thing that people do that's very common is get it with a combination polyurethane heim joint uh, end on each side of each rod respectively. What you're going to end up doing is putting the polyurethane joints on the body side of the rear end and the heim joints on the rear axle portion of it. So it should quiet the car down a little bit and I won't honestly notice any performance difference if I had to guess, but this is just gonna make the ride a little bit more compliant and that's kind of what I'm looking for. But now is the moment of truth. I'm gonna guess that I can go 40, 45 miles an hour without these things taking off. I'm pretty much just gonna go to failure. So what I might actually do is put a little strip of tape on the back of them so if it does peel up, I'm not just gonna lose the thing because I don't wanna go chase it off in the woods if it really takes off or anything. But I think I'll know pretty quick if it's about to come off. So might not be exactly how it'll be in real life, but if you do something like this, you're gonna have like 20 bucks in the materials. And if you're parked somewhere in particular, you're gonna keep 99% of the water out of your engine bay, which seems to be the most common gripe that people have. So I end up getting a 10 foot roll of this. It's wide enough to go to each side of the bulge of the hood, I guess. If you're really smart, you just get a big sheet of it and honestly, I'd probably just lay it from here all the way over to here and just kind of follow the body contour and that sucker would not go anywhere you know that's probably the best way to do it if you want to be able to go down the freeway or anything like that but the idea here I think is kind of coming to life and I don't know what else would you guys do would you put a little bit of foam under these so they actually sit up flush and you can't see the scoops under them I don't know there's more you could do to this to make it better this is just kind of a first iteration of it and I think it turned out pretty good so I'm gonna go hop in the car, go for a little bit of a drive. Looks like it is just now starting to snow, so hopefully I can get in and out before it gets too bad out there. So we'll see you guys in the car.
I bet you I got on the freeway with these. That's amazing. Wow. I'm actually surprised I held that good because you can pick it up really easy, but it just must not catch any wind under there. Now, that's not to say that you should actually trust these at like 60 or 70 miles an hour, but what it's telling me is that they're actually pretty good. A little tape on the leading edge, I bet you you can go like 100 miles an hour with these things on. So that's awesome. I'll go somewhere where you can drive a little bit quicker and we'll see what we can do. Alright, we're doing a take two here. Let's see if they can stay on a little bit quicker. So I think I got them up to 60 before. It actually was staying on pretty good. We're at 55, 60 again. It, guys you can go 60 miles an hour with these on I honestly can't believe it uh, as you can see I took the tape off but otherwise they haven't moved an inch so proof of concept I'm gonna say that these things work awesome and if you want to do this it's a really good DIY way to keep your engine bay dry imagine you can order this stuff in different colors where if you want uh, for a black car or whatever this is a vinyl overlay on it so they must offer it in black and blue and whatever but anything will look pretty good in black or white on it I would think black or for darker colors obviously but you'd be the judge on that Anyways, that's about all I got to say about this. I'm going to get home before I get buried out here, and we'll see you guys back in the garage. All right, guys, so that was actually more successful than I had ever thought. Now, if you want a little behind-the-scenes updates on this stuff, definitely go to my Instagram. It's under Greenlight Filming. All one word, lowercase. You'll see the cars and stuff on there. So, so definitely check this stuff out if you want to see me working on it in the background. But this stuff stayed on going 65, 70 miles an hour a few times. Personally, if you're gonna go hours down the freeway and you were caught in a storm or something, I would definitely recommend putting a little tape on the leading edge and maybe the back of it, just to make sure they're not gonna to totally chuck off while you're going on the freeway, because that would really suck to have to go get them. But honestly, what I've done so far is it just, it kind of showed me that it does work. So let me know what you guys think. What would you do different? They are functional, and this will cost you maybe 20 bucks to keep your engine clean. It's going to have a nice sealed edge all the way around it, and uh, for the most part, it's going to keep moisture and everything out. You can kind of see it's beading up along the edge there, so I think it's going to work just like you're imagining. Might not be the prettiest thing, but I would think a little bit of foam under here would take care of that just to support it a little bit. Anyways, it's the first iteration, and that's all i got to say about it. It's a cool little DIY you can do to these cars and keep your cool hood extractors dry. But enough about that. I'm about to go hop in the truck and take off back into the snowstorm where I'm going to drive about two hours and go pick up some more parts for the car. What I did find is a 